Hi, my name is Meredith Campbell. I have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, and now I'm pursuing my Master of Space Studies here at the International Space University in Strasbourg, France. The thing that sets me apart as a candidate is all of my experience with projects. I've had the privilege of working on a lot of hands-on team projects in my undergraduate work, but there are three in particular that I'd really like to talk about. First is the AIAA Design Build Fly Competition. For this competition, my team built a small UAV that was able to lift six blocks of aluminum and also able to lift a gallon of water and drop it from a specified height. For that project, I was on the fuselage team and I really learned a lot about 3D modeling. The second project I'd like to talk about is the ASME Human Powered Vehicle Challenge. For this competition, students build a bicycle from scratch, which includes a fairing as well as a roll cage. I really like this project. I got to work as the project manager, so I really got to learn a lot about integrating different elements of the bicycle together. But also, we got to take this bike to Florida and compete with it. We didn't win first in any categories, but for a group of sophomores and one junior, I don't think we did too bad with eighth overall in speed and fourth overall in endurance. Now for the project that I think is probably the most relevant and also the most exciting is my senior capstone project. I was on a team of five people that decided to build a high powered rocket with a drag flap system so that we could reach precise altitudes. Our goal was to lift a 10 pound payload to 10,000 feet above ground level exactly. How we wanted to achieve this was by using an algorithm in conjunction with real time data so that we could release a set of drag flaps that would help us just touch 10,000 feet above ground level. For that project, I also worked as the project manager, but I also focused on the avionics. I was fully responsible for the avionics systems of the rocket. While all of the high-powered rockets were flown with professional off-the-shelf flight computers, I did want to see if I could build my own altimeter as well, especially um, so I could use it to control our drag flap system separately. So what I did is I took an Arduino Micro and I attached a pressure sensor as well as an accelerometer. So I wrote an algorithm that would call the altitude data as well as the acceleration data throughout flight. And what this algorithm did was it calculated um, using the drag calculations we knew from our drag flaps and the aerodynamics of our rocket, it would calculate exactly the moment to release the drag flaps based on our current altitude and acceleration. The idea behind this is that it would make up for any inconsistencies in motors. Uh, their motors in amateur rocketry always have an error percentage. They're not always consistent. And so we thought that if we chose a motor where we knew we were going to reach at least 10,000 feet, um, we could use this drag flap system to slow ourselves down enough uh, to hit 10,000 feet exactly. As project manager, I also thought that it would be beneficial if I got my level one and my level two NAR certification on my own. So I did have a very successful level one flight. I didn't have any avionics in that rocket, but it was definitely a good learning experience to switch. It was a good transition from Estes rockets to high powered rocketry. My level two rocket was so much fun because it was my first time working with a dual deployment system and my first time actually testing an avionics system that I designed myself. The level two flight was also a great success and also a great learning experience. So for the high powered rocket that the team built, it was a level three rocket. And with the help of a mentor, we were able to design this rocket and we actually went to Maryland to do a test flight. We had made a design compromise where we moved our avionics bay into our nose cone to make room for our drag flap system. So in order to put the drag flap system where we needed it, we moved our avionics system to the nose cone and therefore the static pressure ports just weren't far enough away from the curvature of the nose cone. We believe that our rocket broke the sound barrier and at that moment the pressure wave tricked our altimeter into thinking that the rocket was falling and so our parachutes were released while our rocket was still under, um, while our motor was still burning. So that flight was not a successful flight. Now due to budget restraints, we only got the one shot. We weren't allowed to build a second rocket. We were the inaugural rocketry team at my school. So there's really no history or background 
to build on. So I really believe that our, if we built another rocket, it would have a successful flight. Or if the next class built a rocket and learned from our experience that they would have a successful flight. So it was a really enjoyable experience. Why do I want to work at SpaceX? Frankly, because I love rockets. They're loud, they're bright, and they go really fast. They're awesome. But I also believe in the mission of becoming a multi-planetary species. The Earth has its limits, and I think that we are reaching those limits. So I think it's important for humanity to expand, and I really think that SpaceX is the company that is leading the way for that future. And why should you hire me? Well, um, I have lots of experience working on teams, on projects, uh, hands-on projects. I'm a very quick learner. What I lack in memorization skills, I make up for in problem-solving skills and pattern recognition, which are definitely my strengths. And also, I'm pretty friendly. I think people like working with me. I really like working on teams. And frankly, my coworkers almost always become some of my closest friends because I work really hard, but I enjoy it. And I think I would enjoy it if I was working at your company. So thank you very much for watching my video and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.